This video is on solving quadratic equations using the square root property. So remember a quadratic equation is an equation such that the highest exponent or the degree is 2. So for example, the equation if we were solving 2 or 12x squared plus 6 equals 0, that is a quadratic equation because the highest exponent is a 2 here. So let's go ahead and begin. So when we're solving quadratic equations, we can use a method involving the square root property. Now this method, we're going to learn in this chapter several different methods for solving equations that are quadratic equations. However, this method we're about to discuss utilizes the square root property, but it only works if, it, if the equation has no b value. So what that means is there's no number with an x in the equation. So like, for example, you could not use it if it was y equals 3x squared plus 5x. So if it has this term right there, you cannot use the method we're learning today we'll have to do something else to be able to use it. So for example, we could use it on this equation and this equation. So here's how the square root property works. The first step is to use it, we need to isolate the square root term to one side of the equation. And then after we isolate the squared term to one side of the equation, we're going to remove the square by applying the square root property. And the square root property involves square rooting both sides. So if I had, let's say, a squared equals 9, and I want to know what a is, we know from last chapter that if we square root both sides, that 2 goes into 2 once. So we know from last chapter that this is going to end up canceling out. And the square root property says we need to put a plus or minus in front of the radical so that our answer is plus or minus 3. So that means a is 3 and a is negative 3. So the reason why we need to put the plus or minus symbol right here is if we think about the equation a squared equals 9. Well, it has two answers. 3 can go there. 3 to the second power is 9. As well as, we can get replace the a, we could plug in a negative 3. And negative 3 squared is also 9. So it has both answers. So that is why we need to make sure when we square root both sides that we put a plus or minus sign. And then the third step is we're going to solve the remaining equation after we um, square root both sides. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. So we're going to solve the same equation twice. First, we're going to do it using the method we've learned so far in this class. In chapter 6, we learned how to factor. So back in chapter 6, the first step would have been look for a GCF, which is 2. Then when there's two terms like this, we can see if we can factor it if it's a difference of 2 squares. So we would have x minus 2 times x plus 2. Because remember when this is a minus, x times x is x squared, and 2 times 2 is 4. We can factor it using a difference of 2 squares. So now we set each of these equal to 0. This doesn't do anything. x minus 2 equals 0, and x plus 2 equals 0. And we get 2 as a solution, and we get negative 2 as a solution. Okay, so again, this was from chapter two, 6, factoring. However, not every quadratic can be factored. If you remember from chapter 6, 
we could get prime. We may not be able to factor every single problem. That's why we need to learn other methods besides solving by factoring. Okay, so now we're going to use the square root property, and it says to get the x squared, whatever squared, by itself. So I need to get rid of the 8, so I'm going to add 8 to both sides. And again, my goal is to get this, whatever is being squared, only the x is being squared, not this 2 right here. So I need to divide both sides by 2. And now I have gotten the squared term by itself, so that's what this means. Isolate the squared term to one both or isolate the square term to one side and now the next step is we're going to remove the square so we're going to remove this by square rooting both sides and remember when we do that this cancels here leaving us x but we have to put the plus or minus here so x equals positive and negative 2 so we could leave our answer like this or we could write it as x is 2 and x is negative 2, just to make sure we know what that means, that there's two solutions there. Okay, examples 2 through 7. Solve the equation using the square root property. Leave your answer as a simplified radical and round to the hundredths place if necessary. Write any complex an answer, so if we get a negative in the radical, in terms of a plus, or we would write it with, imaginary numbers. So first thing, I want to get the x squared by itself, so we'll subtract 3 to both sides. And now we want to get rid of the, squ the square, so we're going to square root both sides, but we need to put in the plus or minus, and then this cancels. So the directions say to simplify. So using last chapter, Simplify your radical using which method 1 or 2. So we get x equals plus or minus 2 rad 3. Okay, so that's the exact answer. 2 times radical 3 and negative 2 rad 3. So it has two answers. Now it wants us to put that in our calculator. So when we enter this in our calculator, we should be putting 2, and then the time sign, and then square root of 3. And when you do that, you should get 3.46. Okay, now we're going to do it again, and this time we're going to do negative 2 times square root of 3. And this time we get negative 3.46. Okay, so we're going to get this term isolated by adding 5 to both sides. And now to get the squared term, we need to isolate it, we need to divide by 2. And now that this is all by itself, to get rid of this exponent, we're going to square root. we got to put plus or minus, this will cancel. And we get y equals plus or minus rad 7. And the square root of 7 cannot be simplified. So it stays as a square root of 7. So our answer is square root of 7 and negative square root of 7. So now go ahead and put that in your calculator. And you should get 2.65. And when you put in negative, square root of 7, you would get negative 2.65. Okay, so we need to get the x, or the squared term isolated, which it already is. So we're ready to square root both sides. And remember when we put in a square root, we need the plus or minus, so we would get x equals plus or minus radical 24. So we need to check. The directions say to simplify our radicals. So the square root of 4 is just 2. And then 6, we can't simplify that. So we would get 
x is equal to plus or minus 2 rad 6. So one of our answers is 2 times rad 6 and negative 2 rad 6. So now you're going to go ahead and put that into your calculator and we should get 4.90. The reason why we need to put that zero there is the directions say hundredths place so that means we need two zeros and then we get negative 4.90. And remember, your calculator will say 4.8989, etc., etc., right? Well, since it said hundredths place, that means we want two numbers. So since the third number here is 5 or higher, then the 89 over here, this 89, will become one more, so 9, 0. So you always have to look at the third number to see if you round up or leave it. Okay, so our goal is to get whatever is being squared, which is the whole x plus 3 by itself. So it already is. So we're going to square root both sides. This is going to cancel and make just an x plus 3. And we need the plus or minus when we square root both sides. And now we're going to solve that just like a normal equation. We're going to subtract 3. And we get positive 5, and then minus 3, and then we get x is equal to negative 5 minus 3. So we're going to get two answers here. We're going to get 2, and we're going to get negative 8. So x is equal to 2 and negative 8. So we don't need to put that in our calculator. So remember, we could always check our answers. So if we check, since these ones um, didn't come out to be, we didn't have to approximate them, then we should get the exact same thing on the left and the right side. If we plug in like for example these ones you're gonna get close but not exact because we we rounded our answers so we would have x plus 3 squared equals 25 and we could take out the x and plug in our answer so we got 2 and then 5 squared is 25 it works then we're gonna plug in negative 8 and it works. 25 equals 25. Both answers work. So the nice thing again about equations, you always can plug in your answer. Okay, next one here. We want to get whatever's to the second power all by itself. So we're going to add one. Okay, then once this is all by itself, that is when we square root both sides and we need to put the plus or minus so this cancels so I'm gonna go ahead and simplify the square root of 8 so go ahead and do that and now we're gonna solve the left side here for x isolate the x just like we would a linear equation so we would add 4 to both sides okay well we can't add this here um, because to add rad something with a radical you have to add something that is a like term with it in the sense of the same index and same number in the radical so we cannot add those two so I prefer to put the positive 4 first. So I'm going to put 4 plus or minus 2 rad 2. And then a 3 next to an x to get rid of that 3 we divide. So we're going to divide whatever we do one side. We have to do the whole side over here. Okay, so next, if we want to leave it all together as one fraction like this, 
Then what you have to do is ask yourself, does anything divide into 4, 2, and 3? So since we have th since we have 1, 2, 3 numbers here, we have to ask ourselves, is there a number that goes into all 3? In this case, no, only 4 and 2. So there has to be a number that goes into all 3 in order to simplify it. We could also, if we want to separate it, we could also write our answer as 4 thirds plus or minus 2 rad 2 over 3. Now, I would not do that because it asks you to write your answer as a decimal. And so since it asks you to write your answer as a decimal, it's easier to enter in the calculator as one whole fraction. So if you would take out your calculator, you want to enter in 4 plus and then 2 and then click the times button and then the square root of 2 and then I would click equals and then whatever that is, leave it in your calculator screen and then click the divide button, so divide and then by 3. So that's what I would enter into your calculator and then make sure that you get 2.28 and now you're going to do it again except for you're going to do 4 minus now. So 4 minus 2 times the square root of 2 equals and then divide it by 3 and this time you should get 0 0.39. So there's our two answers. Okay, so our first step is we want to get the squared term by itself, which it already is. So we're going to square root both sides, and we need that plus or minus. So this is going to cancel there. The square root of negative 49, since we're allowed to work with it, so the answer is not a real number. But we're going to also work within the complex number system, so we could put 7i. So now we're going to solve just like normal, we're going to subtract 2. We cannot put these together because one's imaginary and one is real, so we're going to do negative 2 plus or minus 7i. Or we could also write it as 7i minus 2. But since we always, in standard form with i, with imaginary numbers, we always put the imaginary component or term second. So that is why I'm going to write the negative 2 first here and then the 7i second. And then to get rid of the 5 next to the x, we would divide so that it makes it 1x here. And we're going to divide this whole side by 5. Okay, so then we ask ourselves, is there anything that divides into 2, 7, and 5? If not, we can leave our answer as negative 2 plus or minus 7i over 5. We are not going to approximate that because our calculator only works in the real number system, so we can't enter that into our calculator. Um, we could also... Um, separate this, and if we separate it, we'd have negative two-fifths plus or minus seven-fifths i, or we could also write it as negative two-fifths plus or minus seven i over five. So all three of those are acceptable when you're working online on your homework. Make sure you read the directions and see which form they would like it in.